Right now, Matt Hancock is in Australia taking part in a popular British reality TV show. I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. But Matt Hancock is an elected MP and Parliament is still sitting. Is this allowed? In Britain, MPs are elected by their constituency. We don't vote for a Prime Minister, but we vote for our local MP, who belongs to a certain political party. If you're in England or Wales, that's probably Labour or the Conservatives and it's the leader of this party that goes on to become Prime Minister. Because of this, we can often end up voting for a person we don't know much about as our MP, because we want a certain person to be Prime Minister at the end of the election. The leader of the winning party is then appointed as Prime Minister by the King. This isn't technically law, it's more tradition, but it's basically law, it's not going to be deviated from. So, an MP's role is to represent their constituency in Parliament and Government and they're paid £84,000 a year to do this, so everything they do should be to benefit their constituents. Right? But here's the thing, if an MP's party is in power, then they may be put into the cabinet. So they may be the Chancellor, the Foreign Secretary, or the Secretary of State for Education. The opposition party does this too, which at the moment is Labour, and they're called the Shadow Cabinet. They have the same titles, but preceded by the word shadow, and they like to go around pretending that they're the government. Their job is basically to hold the current government to account for their actions and their decisions. It's kind of weird, but it's what we do here. Now, if your MP is appointed to the cabinet, you could argue that this would inevitably take some of their focus away from their constituency, which is unfair. Your MP could even be the Prime Minister, although the Prime Minister doesn't technically have to be an MP. Their party just has to have the most MPs in Parliament. They could lead a party without actually being elected themselves. Although you could argue that your MP being in one of these positions is a benefit to your constituency. They could use that power and influence to benefit the constituents that voted for them. Although this would be unfair on everyone else. In all of these situations, the MP is still working for and in some way representing the constituency or country that they're paid £84,000 a year to represent and help. But what about jobs outside of government. This brings us to the next question. Can MPs have a second job? This is something that's talked about a lot and is a highly divisive topic. Well, legally, yes, they can. Just over a hundred years ago, this was actually necessary as MPs weren't paid a wage. So they had to be rich, have plenty of time on their hands, or already be paid a high wage for another job in order to be able to sit in Parliament. Poorer people had to work, they'd never have the time to be an MP. So paying MPs a wage was actually a highly progressive thing. This now meant that technically anyone could be an MP, but we all know that technically never really makes its way into reality. However, this did now mean that being an MP could be your full-time job, though they still did often have second jobs or were already very rich. It wasn't actually until the 90s that Parliament stopped meeting at 2.30 p.m which gave MPs the time to work as a second job or as a consultant, bringing in extra income for themselves. These days, Parliament justifies MPs having second jobs by this on their website. A Parliament composed entirely of full-time professional politicians would not serve the best interests of democracy. The House needs, if possible, to contain members with a wide range of current experience which can contribute to its expertise. It does say that any extra income should be disclosed in election campaigns though. Even when an MP is elected, they don't legally have to attend Parliament at all and their attendance is not recorded, though their voting record is recorded, so you could look at that for some indication of attendance. MPs are not employed by the House of Commons and they're technically self-employed in a way. Well, since the advent of email and text messages, MPs and their staff are often expected to deliver more rapid and frequent responses to their constituents though they don't have to do this, but ignoring their constituents would hamper their chances of re-election in the future elections. Technically and legally, MPs can have a second job, since they're kind of self-employed and can act as they wish. However, if they want to belong to a political party such as Labour or the Conservatives, which is almost necessary to be elected in this country, then they have to act in the interest of the party. If they don't do that, they may be kicked out by having the whip removed. We use some weird terms in this country. This could happen if you did something particularly stupid, such as, well, Parliament was still sitting, go away for three weeks to be on a reality TV show on the other side of the world. So, while Matt Hancock is within his rights to jet off to the other side of the world and be on a reality TV show, get paid £400,000 and completely ignore his duties as an MP, MPs can't always do anything they want if they want to remain a member of their party and stand a chance at re-election. Thanks for watching, let me know what you think about this, and I'll see you again soon.